Today, we're looking at the performance of every single lens I own or have access to in a controlled and uncontrolled lighting environment filming on the Red Komodo with and without a speed booster. Hello everybody, my name is Guy Pigton. I am the Savage Filmmaker. I make feature films, web series and shorts and I'm here to give tips and advice to indie filmmakers about how to make those things. In a companion piece to one of my most recent videos exploring filming on vintage lenses, I thought I would test every single lens available to me and see how they performed on my Red Komodo. What do the different focal lengths look like with and without a speed booster? How does a set of new Cine Primes compare with a set of Cine Zooms or old vintage glass? And how do real Cine lenses compare to a range of other photography lenses that I use regularly for filming? Hopefully these tests will help inform you when trying to make a decision about which lens to purchase. And for those who can't be bothered with all the details, spoiler alert, the best lens for your 6K camera is completely subjective and up to you to decide after watching this video. Sorry, you thought this would be easy, right? Unfortunately, there's no accounting for taste. But I will give my opinion on which I like the most at the end, so stick around for that. We performed one set of tests inside using my traditional YouTube lighting setup, and we performed the same set of tests outside in the daytime using some diffusion and bounce with only natural light to contrast and compare the difference. The lenses we tested were a set of Canon CNE primes, the DZO Pictor zooms, my vintage Elmerit Leica lens set, the Sigma 18 to 35 and 50 mm art lenses, the vintage Helios 58 mm 442, the Contax Zeiss 50 mm 1.7, the Zeiss Jenna MC Flecticon 35 mm 2.4 the Canon 90mm Macro 2.8 and finally my Takina Vista Cine Zoom 16-28mm version 1. No grading was done to any of the footage with only the same basic Red Rec 709 LUT applied. The focal lengths range from 16mm at the widest to 90mm at the most close up and we had the Tilta Mirage variable ND map box attached for every test. Now, before you get all aggy in the comment section, I'll be the first to say this is not a very scientific test. While we tried to film everything at 2.8, it's hard to tell on some of the older lenses that have been declicked if they're really at 2.8. And in retrospect, banging a light directly at the lenses in the interior testing for the entire time was not ideal. And we completely forgot to use the color chart in the outside tests. Also, while we tried to keep the tripod in the exact same spot, we had to reposition the height of the tripod for some of the super wide or super tight shots. So, if you can deal with these issues, put on a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and do some pixel peeping. Just do your best not to get caught with your pants off by your significant other when they get back from work, you dirty pixel peeping pervert. Enjoy the tests.
<clears throat> I don't mean to interrupt you, but are you done? Are you quite finished? Do you need a moment? Okay, so what did I think looking at all the footage and which was my favorite? Well, as my DOP and I reviewed this footage, we both agree there was just something special about the Leica Almerit lenses. They really just have a nice way of rendering highlight roll off and skin tones that none of the other lenses do. We both agreed to our eye they looked the best and their softer image was more pleasing than some of the more modern glass. So this gets our number one draft pick. However, it should be noted they perform terribly and quickly wash out when hit by direct light, as you can see in the interior tests. Our second favourite lenses were the DZO Pictor Zooms. While we couldn't test these with the Speed Booster, they really do combine a beautiful blend of the vintage and modern aesthetic. That means your images look great but are not overly sharp or digital. DZO have smashed it out of the park with these zoom lenses which offer incredible value for money and are the first set of zoom lenses I've ever used in which I prefer the image they produce over similar level prime lenses in many respects. I would buy this lens set if I could only have one for all my work and I would buy the 20 to 55 millimeter zoom if I could only have one lens. What was a little sobering to discover was the Canon CNE primes, which are the most expensive of the lenses we used, didn't perform particularly well. Even though on paper these are amazing full frame cine lenses that can go down to T1.5 while still remaining pretty sharp, in practice these lenses just seemed kind of boring. Maybe neutral is a better word, but they just seemed a little flat compared to some of the other options and would not be our first or even second choice for most filming situations. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them, but there is nothing right with them either. They just feel very middle of the road in my opinion. However, it must be said in terms of the focus handling and manual operation, they were the easiest to use and this is part of what you pay for with a set like this. An honourable mention must go to the Sigma Art photography lenses. They really do a great job considering their cost and if you're looking for a high performing set of lenses that won't break the bank and are really excellent versatile all rounders that you can use for standard corporate work and more creative projects and probably represent the best cost to performance ratio of any lens. The Helios 44-2 still remains a curiosity that while not very practical to use, does produce that fascinating swirly bouquet which you just can't help but marvel at. The contact Zeiss and the Genoflectagon lenses were fine but didn't offer anything special all things considered. The Takina seemed a little soft at T3, it was big, bulky and hard to find focus with. But that super wide angle with the relatively undistorted image can be really interesting, especially paired with the speed booster at 16mm. And in last place we have the Canon Macro, which in fairness doesn't really suit these types of filming environments, but certainly seemed considerably worse than the Leica 90mm. So which was your favourite lens? Sound off in the comments section. Were our picks correct? Do you think we're crazy? Can you even notice the differences? I want to know which lenses were most appealing to you. As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker, and I'll see you when I see you.